Hey Tired, it's Darren here. Today we're going to be tying Alan Grombacher's The Canada Fly. This is an ode to the famous red and white Daredevil Spoon and for his adopted country. Al's originally from the US but has been living in Canada for quite a number of years and even acquired the nickname Alberta Al. Even though he's living in Saskatchewan now. So anyways, I'm going to go through the steps to tie up this feather wing in honor of Canada Day 2017. Hope you enjoy it. Let's have a look at the materials and then get started in on the wing. selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the first one, I'm just going to line it up. I'm going to get a visual and where I would like this hackle to end. So I think that's a fairly good proportion right there. I'm going to take my bodkin separate that and I'll pull those hackles hackle fibers off just remember you need to leave a little bit of space for your head it might be a touch long so I'm going to take a couple more fibers on each side And that's the proportion that I am happy with. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to trim off that stem. All right, let's fit these hackles together. I'm just going to take a little bit of thickened Sally Hansen's hard as nails. You kind of see it's fairly thick. That'll make a nice bead on our hackle. So I'm going to take my inside hackle first. Just going to run a tiny little bead. This thick glue just right along the stem. And we're going to match a red hackle on top of that. We'll do the other side. And we'll just set that aside. Now we're going to prepare our jungle cock nails. So what I like to do with these is I put them back to back and match them up and then I'll measure them out at the same time. And pull everything back so that they're sized exactly the same. And you just gently peel off the fluff at the bottom and to attach these we're going to use a regular strength head cement this is the same Sally Hansen's but just a thinner version so I'm going to coat the back of that feather and I'm going to carefully try and line it up on the center of the stem
and we'll set those aside, let them dry. All right, let's go have a look at that hook and get started tying the hook portion of the fly. All right, let's get a fresh hook in the vise. Today I'm using a vintage Mustad. This is a size 6. 36808 hook. And it's, uh, I like this hook. It's got a nice bend in it and it's got this loop back eye, which makes a nice spot for tying this style of fly. All right. We're going to start with a 210 denier flat waxed nylon. Just going to start with a couple loops right at the front here. And I'm going to use a flat embossed tinsel for this one. Make it a little fancier. This is a uni tinsel. I'm going to start tying in right behind the uh, loop. And we're going to take a piece of red silk or floss. And I've got probably about 10 inches worth here. And we'll tie that in. I'm going to try and keep the body as flat as possible. So I like to keep my floss on the top and my tinsel on the front facing side. And I find that if you let your thread unwrap every few wraps, it helps keep it flat and it makes it easy to keep that body really uniform. So I'm down at the hook point, I'm just gonna simply wrap back. Now it's traditional to use a white thread on the underbodies of your floss streamers just so that the, like if you'd used a black thread underneath like a yellow or a red, it would change the color of the floss once it gets wet. If you use a white, it'll brighten the floss. I'm just going to add a couple half hitches here. And I'm going to switch threads, coming in with a 6 aught red Flymaster. And I'm just going to cross over behind just to lock that in. That way I don't have to do a whip finish on the on the thread and cause a little bit of extra bulk. Okay. So I want to just kind of block out my head. So I think I'm gonna make the head about that long. So next we want to add our floss body and add a couple half hitches. And what I like to do is just, with my thumb and forefinger, just pull all the fibers towards me. And that just kind of lines everything up. And then I will slowly begin to turn. You just want touching turns on this floss. And you can kind of see how that starts to separate a little bit. So every couple turns I'll just pull down kind of flatten that out and realign the fibers of the floss. You can kind of see as I'm turning how it loosens up here. 
So again, I'll just push that in. Kind of realign everything. See a couple strands of floss have broken, so I'll fix those up after. And then we'll just catch that at the head. All right, now we're going to wrap our tag and our ribbing for the fly. We'll come in here and we'll add a couple turns towards the back, come back forward, and then when I go underneath is when I'll start ribbing forward. Bend that back. All right, turn that up. We're going to add a belly to this fly. This one uses a red bucktail. I'm just going to take a small section of bucktail. You want to start with a little bit more than you think you'll need. Because we're going to tease out some of the smaller fibers on the back. And then we're going to pull the longest ones out. And we're just going to match those up. And we'll just roll those in our fingers just to kind of align the hairs a little bit just so that they sit nicely on the hook. If there's anything that's really not behaving, you can just pull that straight out until you get a nice behaving belly. All right, we'll trim that. And then we'll just Grab that and we're going to tie it into the underside of the hook. And I just like to take my thumb and just kind of wiggle that before I add anything else just to make sure that it's kind of close to the body as possible. Next we're going to take a couple schloppen feather fibers. Probably about an inch or so of feather length. It's probably a good amount. I'll we'll just kind of place those over at the bottom. A couple wraps. And there's our belly and our throat. Next we're going to add a few pieces of peacock. So I'm going to take about 
Let's see, four or five peacock curls. You want to find the straightest ones you can. And then we're just going to tie those on top of the hook shank. I'm going to match that to the belly, maybe a touch shorter. This helps add a nice lateral line presentation to the fly. So, and then finally, we need to add a wing. So we've got our pre-made wings here. And we're just going to basically tent those over top of the peacock, like so. Make sure that they're sitting properly. And then tie them in place. So one thing I like to do with the stems is just take a pair of flat pliers and I'll just squeeze the stems, kind of helps flatten them, makes them a little bit easier to tie in. Sometimes you can tie them in at the same time. We'll just do a quick loose fit, make sure that looks okay. It's not as nice as I'd like, so I'm going to just back that off. And I'm just going to tie them in one at a time. This gives you a little bit more control over the way that the wing's going to sit on the fly. That looks better. Give it some final adjustments. Make sure you have a look at it from the front to make sure that it's sitting straight up and down. Looks good. So I like to push those hackle tips up. Butts. And we'll just come in and Clean up the head area. Add a whip finish, and there we go. There's Alan Grombacher's Canada Fly. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice.
Cheers.